the top 20 players of Stylus Competitive League Season 3. A group of friends got together and we came up with the list of the best players that played last season. Malt, Miguel, Sinister, Tom, Anto, Epsilon, Pulse, Lemonhead, and Kitten Spitz each made their own lists and then using a point rating system, they were compiled into one. This video features some of the best competitive gameplay ever witnessed, so relax and enjoy the discussion. So what makes Seed the Otro Mundo a uh, top 20 player? I mean, he uh, helped THG win a lot of matches. Like, he was never really a hard carry like Sin was, but he played his role, and he usually did consistently very well every match he played. I mean, he helped them get second place over DG, and I'm sad about it, but he's really good at the game. He's, like, insanely underrated. He put a lot of time in PFMM. Yeah, insane time in PFMM just caused him yeah. to be, like, really, really consistent with his play. Yeah. When it comes As to well. nades... Just, just playing smart, doesn't play like a psycho. Just yeah. wins in gunfights like a normal person. Just play smart as, from them. Yeah. As so well just as, like, a regular good player. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like the gold also, standard for like, top 20. Yeah, nothing. Did a lot of good work with like Miguel in the past that set him up to do good this season, so I think he's very deserving of top 20. Anto put a lot of time into PFMM during, especially after season 3 ended. He's perfected nades crazy what he can do with nades like mapping literally anyone on top of that it's like his play style he is able to keep really good control over the map because he tends to anchor a lot but he can also yeah. switch that up whenever he wants and just start keying and play exactly like he could just fit any role and i'd say like it's his versatility that makes him a really really good player he's not going to be like at the top 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 like top fragging well he could but uh he's not going to be like up there on like all the best teams but he's gonna be able to fit his role really really well and he's really consistent especially good on warehouse yeah, especially good like literally tier really one on good. warehouse <laughs> just like neo yeah. did consistently well and helped his team almost get a podium just with mm -hmm. his great versatility and just great nades overall really helped uh, with the team now the next placement duskio what's holding him back from being higher up on this list I think he's confined to one play style. Yeah. I've seen him do like stuff outside of anchoring and he does really well. He does really good in PFMM. He gets like high KDRs, but in matches, I'm not really sure if anchoring is really a, a viable play style, especially yeah, against top teams doesn't anymore. He play enough OBJ. Yeah. Like. He, he uh, believes in his play style, being able to like hold at the back of the map and like keep a control over the entire map but in reality it's like he's kind of needed sometimes to like push up to get map control but instead he sits back and is a little bit too passive yeah. it's not that he's a bad player he's definitely like very mechanically gifted very good aim but yeah if he came yeah, a bit I mean, more and like worked on obj play and like just forcing up on the like map control it'd be a lot better overall the meta has changed from anchoring is almost not a play style that exists anymore in competitive play right now Sure, it exists, but you never do it for a full match. Tom has solidified him, like himself, as the only player that could anchor and still do well in today's game. Uh, moving on to Young Blazer 177, uh, uh, other known as Joey. I mean, Joey didn't really show up for drinking very much at the end of the season, but it was fine. He was a really important part of Dream Gang, uh, almost being THG, as once he uh, once he left third map. We did end up uh, taking a loss, but overall, I think he's uh, slightly underrated on this list. He's really great, has consistently done well on top teams, even last season. Got it, was able to get on a ID. Just yeah, overall, yeah. Just his rookie season, great player, he made it, really, he really, made it to and yeah, I really well, really, really Fragger. Um, yep. I remember playing in some scrims with him, like Rogue, like early season two, I think, and he was really good back then. Um, so I think he, he was underrated for a while and then people started recognizing him and then he got on ID and then it's been uh, up for him ever since. He doesn't play all that much anymore, but he's still really, really good. So I think, I think uh, that's his, I think that's the thing holding him back is that he tends to take either like really long breaks of inactivity or like he just dips off the face of the planet. No one really knows where he goes and then he shows up and then tries to play, but it, it would be better off if you were to play a bit more consistently. But you know, he has a life outside the game. You can't really get mad at him. Speaking uh, of lives outside of the game, Wavy 
It looks like he only played one match. Indeed, he did only play one match, but that won't take away from the fact that he is an absolutely insane player when he plays uh, a lot. I think that one match kind of speaks a lot. That the fact that he didn't play the entirety of Season 3, but in the finals against THG when his name was called, he did pretty fine, actually. I'm looking at 46 and 33. That's a really good stat line against the second best team for not playing like at all the whole season. It just doesn't rush. He's, yeah, he's one of those players that just don't rest consistently and does well. And like Mo mentioned, when his name is brought up, he will perform. And that's what he proven this season as well. Yeah. Uh, Moving on to Drac or Jacarius. What do you guys think of him? Mechanical think, uh, mastermind. Yeah, yeah he's, a, he's really, really player. smart. He knows a lot about the game. He, um, he can really just do whatever you need him to do. Like he'll W key, he'll anchor. Uh, he's uh, very good on essentially every map. He just mm -hmm. does whatever he needs to be, like, does what needs to be done. He probably knows a lot of the inner workings with the with all the guns and the yeah. maps, like how to get around all the spawns really well and stat Playing lines for guns. It's really interesting. It's really interesting because his comms are, like, changing dependent on, like, spawns and stuff. They'll tell you where to push up and like when to fall back to manipulate the spawns. It's really, really interesting, and a lot of the times it works with a good team. Definitely yeah, yeah, one of the most knowledgeable players, or the most knowledgeable player in PS. Honestly, the thing holding him back is that he doesn't play as much anymore because he's branched out to play other games. But his stats for this season, I mean, he's got 1.8 KD. He has the highest KDR. Highest so, KDR, and he he did good when he was called on, deserving of his spot. Next up, Next we're going to be moving on is to self Knight. Proclaimed Canada number one. Is that Knight? Self proclaimed yes. Canada number one. That is Knight. I think we could talk about Knight back on Azon, first of all, because that's when he kind of blossomed out because it started with his performance against PR and ID. He was consistently a top fragger on Azon behind Carbon and Doom, or even above Carbon and Doom. And that's pretty impressive because both of those guys, I mean, Carbon is in the top five. And Doom, if he continued to play the season, he would be guaranteed probably a top, like, at least 12 in my eyes. That's where I'd put him. Uh, and the fact that Knight's able to keep up with that is really good. And this season, he made quick adjustments to, like, get adapted to pro rules. And his play style, like, complements a bit of passive, like, like, playing passive. The way that Knight plays aggro, he's really, really smart about it. He isn't, like... He's not like kind of like just sprinting full speed and just trying to like get up in people's faces. He's taking his gunfights selectively and only ends up taking them when he knows he wins, but he manages to push up extremely far. So his play style is a, a smart version of egoing. Uh, like a flex because, play style. Yeah, it's, it's flex because he pushes up and then holds and then pushes up and holds and gets kills. Uh, next up, we have Free Gigan or Mo uh -huh. or Benny, whatever you want to call him. Uh, uh -huh. Overall, great player. Really fun to play with him. He knows what he's doing. Great idea when it uh, when it comes down to it. He tells you what to do. He he knows what to do in the scenario. And just overall, great player. Doesn't lose many gunfights. Knows when to nade. Just awesome player overall. Crazy movement. Don't forget the movement. <laughs> Number two movement. Only behind Pulse. Jimmy is... <laughs> Another one of those players that doesn't really rust. He hasn't really been playing actively ever since the end of Season 3, and even during. But, I mean, the entire time, everyone regarded him as a top player. And in PFMM, he would always do well. In matches, he would always do well. Um, he's just really, I mean, he's good to play with. He just, his comms are good. His energy is good. He just does what needs to be done. He can play passive. He can hold down power positions. Isn't can... isn't there a call out on elevation named Jimmy after him? Jimmy Jimmy Boxes. Boxes. So that's, where that's his spot. Where is that and how how does he play exactly? It's right next to mid ramp. It's a stack of boxes that he made famous for just sitting on it and head glitching, whether it be to deny cap um or to deny a flank from double. I mean he trademarked that spot, so I think that's Yeah, uh, he he holds it really well as the first yeah. person to ever use that part of the map to a significant like just to, to to use the part of the map really well. Like no one else has solidified the spot so well. I think at least on any map besides from Jimmy with his Jimmy boxes. Yeah, this player is yeah. literally called Jimmy boxes. <laughs> next, I'm next not thing. recognizing the next one. It's box <laughs> Daniel. It's box I mean, his aim alone 
is really, really, really good. Um, Top tier all the way. He plays the game down to its fundamentals, and it's like he's worked on just like the most basic mechanics so much that he uses them to win his gunfights. And I mean, it shows because he is consistently like over the past seasons, even in CPFO, he was considered to be a really, really good player, and he's continued it all the way through SCL without actively playing a lot. Kairos JXJ. One of the most similar play styles to me, I would say very uh, W key oriented, but he knows when what's a fight uh, and when to fight, what gunfights he could win, what gunfights he could possibly lose. And just he plays smart, really good aggro player, really good aim, especially uh, compared yeah. to the rest of the league. Just plays really well. And with a little bit of mentoring, he could uh, he top frags consistently, especially when Sam coached him on mm -hmm. Dream Gang. Besides from the mental state that he usually has while playing, he's a great player to play with overall. That's a, that is his only weakness, honestly, and that's the only thing keeping him back from being put higher. I mean, we always make fun of him for it, but it is like seriously his biggest problem is that he tends to get tilted while playing pretty quickly if he's not performing up to his standards, which are extremely high for himself. I think if he were to like drop the ego and drop the standards, he could easily push and become a much better player, but he just has to do that. Next up on the list is going to be Nine Six. What a great player. What an insane player. Even, uh, like, I would just say his aim is so insane compared to almost anybody in the league. He's consistently won uh, gunfights and even has aim where I speculated him of cheating. And uh, he's proven himself to not be hacking or cheating in any sorts, which. Uh, which I the league for a couple of days yeah. thought that he was cheating because yeah. he, was dropping, he was dropping 80s at like almost back to back just off of his raw aim alone. Yeah, just insane aim has got like helped him even uh, get on the second place team THG in such a short amount of time. Just overall, mm -hmm. great player. Uh, despite like he just he plays smart, plays aggro a little bit, uh, kind of similar to Kairos, except I would say maybe slightly better aim. That's why he's slightly ahead. Didn't really perform in many matches this season, but definitely, was, definitely up there. I think that's the so. thing that's holding him back was uh, yeah. from, from putting him higher because his his PFMM performances when there's no nerves on the table and how Top he just three. plays three, three or four maybe easy when he's in that when he's in the zone. But when it came to matches, maybe he was nervous. Like massive expectations were put on him to show up, and he didn't. But you can't really be mad at someone in their first season not really playing up to par, but. Especially when yeah. in the second bus team and had to perform in grand finals. Exactly. So, uh, Nine ticks and kitten spits. This most recent season, this would be their first season that they played in yeah. comp. Indeed. Indeed. Yes. I was just gonna say, I so where punch. did they come from? They came from a uh, spirals community. He recommended that they should play comp, and they started playing at around about the same time. And I, think I remember that Nine like, ticks was. Um, he got really good really fast. KSP took a while, but I think uh, KSP is above him on this list because of his performance in SCL. He did really well in a lot of matches against top teams like DI or Drain Gang. Um, they're both really, really good, talented players. Uh, they played a lot to get good, to get where they are. And in their first season, they got second place, which is um, it's a really good accomplishment for them. But, yeah, I remember their first PFMM games. I was absolutely blown away with like how they were like already starting to unpack the game and like they were starting to understand. They didn't know the comms, but they kind of understood the map flow really, really quick. And I mean, KSP was like 50 and like 30 all of his first matches, and Nine Ticks was like right behind him as well. It was very impressive to see. And so I told Sin, you should most definitely pick these guys up and look at where they made it. Two top 10 players. Definitely like a pub player play style, but it works for him. He wins most of his gunfights. He knows where to push up, what power positions are, and just plays around that really, really well. Next Van one or looks like an Floyd. abnormality on the yeah. Yeah. from the data. I'm gonna say I don't necessarily agree with his positioning on this list, but I can understand why. Uh, he never really, con like he didn't really play. He played one map for DI in SCL, but um. In PFMM, he was always a really good player, and in previous seasons on PR, he um, did really well. And he's been good for a while since CPFO. I think he was on, like, Azon back in the day. Um, and just overall has never done bad. 
Yeah, he's uh, a consistent player. Yeah, and extremely. I mean, I would say the reasons up there is for his extreme, extreme consistency as a player. Always just like he's just so much smarter than everyone. Plays off of that. Has good aim. Has good mental. Just great IGL. Despite him like not talking much, he will tell you what to do, and he's usually chill about it. He just he helps you learn a lot. He's definitely one of the players that I learned a ton from. And uh, that's why I respect him. That's why I put him even as sixth place on my list. But uh, on the whole list, he's seventh place, which I think he right, rightfully deserves. Miguel, let's see. Season one of SCL, we look back at um, FBR. Uh, they were not a great team, but they always had one standout player that was going to consistently get high kills, and he carried them throughout SCL, and that was Miguel. He's been really good. He's an insane pub player. He grinded pubs. Um, and then he transferred. He's level 500. Level it's a bit of an abnormality because on like the spreadsheet, his SCL season, he did go neg. But I think if we're just basing this straight off of PFMM, it's uh, it's hard to count him out because he's yeah. very, very good. He just somehow win, wins gunfights that, that shouldn't be possible to win. Yeah, I know. Like he's He can take a 1v2 and he'll win it. And even a one v three, it's crazy. Yeah, insane pop off potential, just crazy playstyle overall. But it works for him. Just when he gets rolling, game. when yeah. he gets rolling, there's like no stopping him. It's like, it's like it's like once he gets on a, on a good run, he just follows it to the end of the game, and he drops like an eighty, yeah, and it's I've crazy. Seen, I've seen him win yeah. gunfights that just I couldn't believe were possible, just based off of pure skill. Now we're in the uh, top five. This is the these big are the boy. big. Yes, these are the these are the these Big are the, the heavyweights. These and are heavyweights. Start with um, pulse number one movement god in PS. Yeah, um, absolutely crazy the way he came in and literally for an entire summer, a span of a couple months, he was far and away the best player in the game. Like there was no debating it. At his peak with movement, uh, gunplay, aim, game sense, everything. Like you, you just were not going to stop him. Only player to have dropped a hundred. He did it twice. Um, he's just really good. He can pick up any gun, play on any map, play on any team, and he'll just always do well. Um, he's very deserving of the top five, and I probably would have ranked him a little bit higher. But especially uh, yeah. when he had access to like all the M sliding and the Zingus sliding, he had such a like a like a good grip on all of the movement that he just used straight up movement to win every single gunfight, and he was able yep. to get. I mean, gosh, do you remember when like Pro Q was a thing on that old bot? Pulse like was one of the like few people. I think it was him and like Miguel and maybe like a couple other people that grinded fourteen hundred Elo, and like he did it really, really quick, which is like the important thing about it. What would you say your favorite map is, Pulse? Uh, it's definitely been hard, especially with movement being gone. I'm I, a few months ago. I would have definitely said uh, Elevation. Because I would be able to use my movement to the max, but I would say now it's going to be suburbia of just how equal of a map it is, how fair it is for both sides, and it really shows the skill. It it brings out the skill on both teams, and you could definitely show and just prove how good you are on that map specifically. Suburbia, I really love it. that's the map that you got the a hundred on, right? Yes. Uh, I mean, it's just I from the very start, ever since it was released, I just understood how to play it really well. From nades, just to where they would spawn, telling where my team to rotate to, telling them to either push left side or right side of the map if we had too much control of one side. We didn't want to give up the other half of the map. Just overall, just a really balanced map that I've always enjoyed playing. Okay, and last question for the number five spot. Pulse, would you say right now or this week you're better or worse than build nice guys? Um... That's almost impossible to say. Build is uh, extremely consistent. I'm being, I, I get called inconsistent because I don't try a lot. I really don't know. It's it's really hard. It's too hard to say. I think at the end of the season, it will show who's better. Maybe one of us is going to move up a few spots. Or maybe you're going to move down a few spots. We'll see. I really don't know uh, who's better. Between the top five, it's just, it rotates back and forth. Sin was fifth. Now he's second. Ruby was there, and now she's first. It just goes back and forth, back and forth between the players. And also, and the, throughout the top five, 
the placing could also change depending on the maps because some of these players prefer different maps than others. Especially, I would say right now I'm the best suburbia player. And I don't know if that's my ego speaking, but I've never done bad on the map. No one's ever diffed me on the map uh, or just done better than me on it. And I think I consistently do better than any top five player on suburbia right now. But that could also change. I would say Ruby is probably the best elevation player tied with both nice guys. And Carbon, probably best warehouse player, just how well he pushes up their office and uh, just plays that map extremely well. So I think, yeah, uh, the top five definitely changes throughout the different maps. I think we can move on to the fourth position, which is uh, both nice guys. Oh, yeah. And now, <laughs> when you said that the top five is uh, now these are the heavy hitters, were you talking about build specifically? Because, uh, because there's though, it's uh, a little joke going there around. There's no fat joke intended with what I said. Okay. We are, we are not fat phobic here. Okay, in real talk, that joke is overused and it's not funny. Please I agree. stop the hate. Stop the hate. Uh, was that something about moving on to build nice guys? Overall, probably maybe the best, just overall best consistent player. No one else is as consistent as him. Everyone in the top five has done bad at least a few times in matches, but I've never seen Build ever do bad. He just, the nade work, his intelligence, he just plays off of picks really well. Not the best trader, and as Nolan would say, his aim is terrible, but just his intelligence and his just use of nades just gives him the advantage in most gunfights, which is, I mean, which is why he's the most consistent player. I think that's I think that's Bill or like Nick's like biggest like a uh, strong suit is the nades because when it comes to OBJ uh, base game modes he by himself is able to wipe a point by just getting like a double nade and then he only has to shoot one guy and he's able to clear off most of the point because he's just that damn good with nades. Mr. Lag Spike, Mr. Teleporter, uh, a, carbon. a carbon. Overall, just I mean I think me and him were tied for a while as best aggro player, but uh. I think he now has superior aim. Just definitely one of the uh, best players in the game with how well he could just win his fights and play maps overall. He dropped uh, 93 this morning in PFMM. Well, technically yeah, afternoon, did, did but it was that. morning. What the hell, really? He dropped yeah. 93 earlier today, and he really? was on pace for 100. Yeah, he was like 50 with like five minutes to go. Elev- it was kind of crazy. Yeah, I was on elevation, Koth. He's able to just continuously push up, and he just wins every single one of his gunfights, and that's his like his biggest strong suit. I was playing against him on Suburbia, and he was consistently killing me, Nolan, a couple other people, Flight and Sammer. Uh, we really struggled against Carbon because he was just so damn good at just winning gunfights. He just walked up, he'd either flank extremely hard, or he'd just push up straight in your face, and before he could even react, he's mowed down you and two of your teammates, and he's just sitting in your spawn now. I think that basically yeah. sums up Carbon in like the most simple way possible. He is super annoying to play against, but that annoyingness, it gets under people's skin and makes them play worse, and he takes full advantage over that, and he wins. Before we do the last two, Anto brought up a good point. I think we should do honorable mentions, because the last two are like tier zero players. Like they're In my mind, there's <laughs> no one even close. There's no one even close. Honorable mentions, The I think the easiest one for most people to think of is Zudo. And his grenades, and not even just his grenades, but him as a person. I mean, he's like a really fun guy to play with. Doesn't really take the game seriously, but he can do well when needed. Yeah. He essentially we talk forced of, yeah. nades to be reduced down to one. There used because to be he was like so good. Nades. If I could put someone above Build when it comes to nades, the only other person that is better than Build with a grenade is Zudo. Zudo will yeah. consistently drop a nade and it'll just perfectly explode on your head because if, he's if, not yeah. good with it. If there's and more now, than two people on a point, they're just guaranteed dead. We I have, think um, a reason why Zudo also got good with grenades is, have you seen his setup when you first yeah. started out? Yeah, in his bed on a laptop with the mouse on like the corner of the laptop where it's like kind of flat and you can use it. And the fact that he was destroying everybody on <laughs> in minors and then he switched to PFMM and then he was consistently starting to top frag in that. Without the use of guns is impressive, and now he has a desk again. Yeah, now that... his mechanics, his mechanics still might not be the best, but he's definitely gotten able to hold his own with a gun. That's impressive. 
And then we have um two people we had to remove from the list because while they are very good, they did not really play. They played um qualifiers only, I'm very sure. And that's uh Demir and Nathan. I feel like he was one of those players that was really underrated and he had a like a breakout season out of nowhere, it seems. From what I know, um uh Epsilon has said that uh Nathan's strong suit used to be Nate crutching, but now he's evolved in more into a smart just overall, just smart player, which uh, and his main play style is usually anchoring at a certain location, and he knows what to do at certain times. As uh, the few times where I did go against him, he's brought matches back completely by just playing smarter than my team. He would push, say I'm police, my whole team's police. He would push doubles, anchor, and make sure that none of us could push the hill. And he's just really good at adapting to a different team's play style. And that's why he would have been on this top uh, 20 if he did play more. I think he's a top 20 player skill-wise. Yeah. He just didn't play enough to make the list, and that's what uh, kept him back. Now moving on to the top two players, both extremely close, and ironically are both Swedish. <laughs> Any comments on Sinister? Gary THG. Oh, my God. Best, the best warehouse player. <laughs> if we did, like, awards for SCL, he was the clear-cut MVP for Season 3. Um, he consist. I mean, not even consistently. He always did extremely well, doing the most to help his team win, and it worked. He um, even dropping out. seventy against the third place I mean, team, Drain Gang, yeah. in semifinals. Yeah, yeah, just absolute dominance from him. And you could clearly, I would say, you could probably put him first. It's but, interchangeable for sure. Yeah, just definitely one of those players that uh leveled up the season completely showing how dominant he could be without like despite ks feeders and nine six there's no one else that on the team that could uh like keep up with him and even those two players would not keep up with him he was just seemingly consistently great and i've only seen like him do bad once and even then he was still carrying thg and just hold held the whole team on his back to let them get second place I think uh, like an interesting point to be brought up is we talk about Ruby and Sin, the, the first and second players, being even f leagues ahead of third, fourth, and fifth place. Is there something that we can name specifically that makes them just that bit better, or is it just a mix of everything? They're just that much better than uh, everyone. I would say, I would for, say... Ruby, for Ruby, it's aim. Yeah, aim. For sure, it's aim on Ruby's part. Uh, like... You're not winning it. Uh, just a straight gunfight with her. You're not winning that. You're just not. Um, you have to go above and beyond to even try to think about winning a gunfight. Uh, her aim and her knowledge on the game and how long she's been playing and how long she's been good. When she first started playing back in CPFO, literally every soul under the sun thought she was cheating. Um with and she had little to no comp experience at that point so she's been good for a long time x factor player on any team just <laughs> just vanilla or a cat other known as ruby other known as oscar whatever you want to call them or call them i should say uh just i would say they're like a 99 overall if like if this was a game 99 overall just that has nothing bad about them it's just consistently has done well and like like everyone said experience the gunplay, especially, I would say Ruby's number one aimer, and a close second is Carbon. It's just like she doesn't lose her fights. She plays well, plays smart. I just, I don't know what to say. And her nades are definitely underrated, as she uses them when it's needed, and it's usually a perfect nade right on top of your head to kill you. Like when you see Ruby pushing through office and you're a ghost, just know that your team is like completely, they're, they're done. Ruby's going to push into OP and she's going to get at least three kills and you guys are going to be back in the corner of her spawn. And that's just how she does it. She just pushes up and she wins. And it, it it's it's so incredibly hard to play around. Because on top of that insane aim, she's so smart when she plays. It's kind of like the complete package, honestly. It doesn't It doesn't get a whole lot better than that. And to add one more thing, one last thing, I think we all forgot that they're both European, and every Ooh. single game is played on NA. To play oh, that well at a hundred ping, both of them, both Sin and Ruby, Vanilla or Cat or Oscar, whatever you want to call them, just to consistently do that well on that high of ping, like it doesn't get really much better than that. And that's why 
I think that and their overall skill in a certain area is what pushes them to be the top two players that are both interchange interchangeable. Yeah, ping, is, first ping is something that us NA players indeed take for granted because the second that it's an EU server, all you hear all you hear from us is like complaining and like but they don't say a word. They just they just boss up and <laughs> yep. they, they, they get their top two spots for a reason, both Ruby and Sin. And, and think, should it also be noted that Ruby's aim isn't just good for a PF player. Their aim is actually oh, top tier even amongst other aimers. Like she you did can see win, them. or she did get second in that big aim blocks tournament a while ago, and yep. I know, like, I think on top of that, I, I don't know. The most impressive thing is like she manages to run a like vastly successful YouTube channel. She got invited to DreamHack as a uh, content creator, but just on the side, she doesn't put much time into comp at all. She's still the number the one player. player. She's the best player. And yeah, that's kind of just speaks numbers for how gifted she is just naturally at the game that she's able to keep up and do this. Upcoming there's a season. there's a couple of returning faces coming into comp as well. I know that Slammer's making a return. That guy is crazy when he used to play. So we're gonna see where he ranks at the yeah. end of also season seeing, four. Uh, yeah. Come back from Luminary, Luminary, Winky, Luminary, yeah. Luminary yeah, is coming let's back. Let's not well. forget about the big man himself, the big old man, I should say, Nolus or Nolan. No one is <laughs> he is coming back, and he is probably going to be top three, if not the best player next season. I can kind of foresee that already. It's going to be so. interesting to see. You should be very excited for season four to see how people compete. Not just on a team, not just for the teams, but for the individual players themselves. Seeing new players come out of nowhere and like show up and like be good, just like KSP and Nine Ticks were this season. There's going to be someone who's crazy good this season. It's like kind of a guarantee. And the already good players, we're going to see who prevails at the top. 